Hey guys, Pastor Aaron here. Hope you're having an absolutely blessed day. Hey, we are going to dive into our Roman study. But first, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for this time together. We thank you for your word and, and how your word reveals who you are and what you've done for us. And so as we dig into your word today, Father, open our eyes and our hearts to what you want us to see, what you want us to learn. And we, uh, we just pray for your blessing in our study, and we pray that in Jesus' mighty name. And they all said, Amen. All right, guys, you know it's time. Grab your journal, grab your Bible, grab something to write with, and let's get going. All right, where we left off last week, we kind of let, left off with this thought, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, so we've been looking at sin. Um, but we've been looking at it from the perspective of this isn't the end, right? Not the end of a thought, but the beginning. And so let's move into that new thought as we start today. And so as we start digging into Scripture and we start looking at what it has to offer us, here's our outline. And so we're kind of looking at God revealed, right? Christ revealed, more importantly. And even more importantly than that, Christ's work on the cross revealed. Because it's not just a cross on its own, but it's Christ's work on the cross that becomes powerful. The provision of God's righteousness, remember we're right in the middle of that, so this is the ultimate provision is what we're gonna look at today. And so, here we go, we're in Romans 3, 21 through 26. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so we have two really, two really thoughts forming here, right? So from apart from the law, which is what we see in 21, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And so the law, which what God put into play, he also was a witness to that. And then we also see that the righteousness of God through the faith of Jesus Christ for all those who believe, there, there's no distinction, right? And so, once again, we hit this word or this thought of no distinction. And so what's going on here is a new thought, an opening. These kind of sound weird on their own, but if it's the opening of a new thought, man, they're powerful. What, God, what, what Paul is letting us know in Scripture here is, is the law shows us what sin is and the need for God and God's righteousness. And once again, we all have sinned. No one will be in the kingdom of God who didn't have a sin condition except for Jesus Christ who covers our sin, right? On this side of eternity, we have sin. Sin has plagued us. So let's look at what that really means because it says here, for all have sinned. Hmm. Yes, I was right. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So there's nobody perfect on earth. We've all sinned. Judgment is coming. And so this is kind of a cool thought. I'm going to go back because we're going to enter into a court case right now. Romans 2.16, on that day when according to my gospel, God will judge the secrets of men through Christ Jesus. So we have this gospel, the good news, the message of Christ dying on the cross. And someday it tells us in Romans that God will judge us in that. We know this because his scripture points to this judgment all throughout. We also know what Christ did on the cross was to pay the price for this judgment, which is really cool, which is what we pick up in Romans 3.24. Being justified as a gift through by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. And so we got a couple big words here. We got this justified, we have this redemption, but we have a court case going on and, and there's been a penalty the penalty for sin is death. You've been penalized to death. Okay? But, but there's a gift also, and a redemption, and grace. And so let's continue to look at how these look. But first, before we get into that, right? Word study, because we're hitting four really big words that pretty much work about in this part of Scripture, and in Scripture, and in theology but a lot of times you just don't find them in everyday life. So let's look at it. The first one is justified. So what this word means is declared or made righteous in the sight of God. So you've been declared or made right in the sight of God. So there was a penalty, 
but you've been made right in the sight of God. Redemption, the action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment or clearing out a debt. So you have been redeemed. There was a payment made for your death, for that penalty. Jesus Christ paid that on the cross with his blood. It's pretty powerful. And here's a word, propitiation, right? The action of appeasing a God, a spirit, or a person. And so the propitiation, Jesus was our propitiation for God's judgment, which means he prayed the price for that judgment. His action was pleasing. It was a propitiating action. And so we have that big word. We want to look at that. And then we got this word forbearance, the action of refraining from or exercising a legal right. So it's you have a right, a legal right to do something, but you choose not to. You choose not to act on that legal right. And that's a pretty powerful thing. Can you imagine having a legal right to act on something and yet then choosing not to? Okay, so let's hop back into this trial. Who's your justifier? Whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation. So we got Christ, right? Jesus Christ, who God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith. That was to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. And so Jesus hears our propitiation. He fills in for us, right? He takes our place. And God forbear. He chose to allow that to happen. He was okay with it. Within his own legal rights, he could have punished us. But his forbearance chose him not to. So for, de for demonstrating, I say, of his righteousness at the present time so that he would be just and the justifier of those of the one who has faith in Jesus. And so he's our justifier, right? If we have faith in him. And so he went through this court trial for you. Real words, real trial, real life. There's a real penalty for sin. So here we are, because I don't want to let this go. And we're going to wrap up today and kind of just leave you with this one thought. Romans 3, 23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We know that. We also see that grace through faith, right? Christ's grace, our faith in him, brings us to salvation. It means that God's blood covers us. And on your judgment day, you won't be judged because God will only see Jesus and his righteousness. It's a really cool gift that, that Jesus paid on the Christ for us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so... Have you accepted this free gift? We're just going to leave with this one thought. We have been building up for three chapters of Romans up to this moment. We're going to keep looking at this, right? But now we're done looking at sin and we're going to start moving towards the idea in Romans 6.23 that there's a free gift in Christ. But I challenge you today, our sins separate us from God. There was a penalty that needed to be paid. Jesus Christ's work on the cross, his death, paid this price. It's a free gift of grace. All you have to do is ask it into your life today. So I want you to do that, and I want you to pray this prayer with me if you haven't. And so, Father God, um, we, we want to ask you into our lives today. We want to turn from the way we were going, our evil ways, Lord, and we want to turn and we want to follow your way. Um, I was bent towards wrath and doing wrong, evil things. And Lord, with this new heart, you can give me a heart of flesh. I can be bent towards righteousness and start doing your will and producing your fruit. And so, Father God, uh, I just want you to be in my life. And I love you. All right, guys, if you said that prayer today, get excited. Angels in heaven are cheering with you. Run around. Don't keep it to yourself. Go tell your parents. Get on the phone right now and call me. Let somebody know because God loves you too much to leave you where he found you. He's still got some work he wants to do in your life. He wants to help you grow. Be more like him. He wants to do ministry with you. He wants you to get into his word and, and start growing in him and becoming more like him. One of the coolest things we get in our Christian walk is the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit helps us to become more like God. To be more loving. To be more patient. To be more kind to have more long-suffering, just to be more like Christ. And so 
Um, our journey presses on. We're going to start pressing towards this new thought that, that reveals itself fully in Romans 6.23. But until then, keep journaling, keep writing, keep having those great questions. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a blessed day.